Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial or Geeky Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Let's get on to uh, finishing up our spoon here. I think what I'm going to do is select those. I'm going to loop them. I'm going to taper this in a little bit so it gets a little smaller. Loop that, select that. Okay, now we're going to run into a few little problems, I suspect, when we uh, continue with this. So I'm going to go ahead and model it, and when we run into these problems, I'll show you at least one way to fix them. If we add, say, two levels of smoothing, Notice that the smoothing effect really uh, smooths it too much and we have too much of a curve here. So, first thing we need to do is fix that. And I'm just going to select that, loop it, come up here and use this extract around. And I'll create some additional edges there. Now when we do this, there is much less, but it's not quite enough, so what we need to do is make these edges closer together. Rather than far apart like I did, we'll make them a little bit closer together. And let's try that. That's okay, but we still got the edges here, so if we spin around and look at it this way, notice the profile here. It's really smoothed over. So we need to fix that problem as well. So what I'm going to do is select that, loop it, loop, select those. You know what? I'm going to select that. I'm going to bring it in a little bit more. Okay, let's go to our edges, loop, select those. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little chamfer to them. Now if we add too much, it'll make it too uh, sharp of an edge. So I want to bring it, oh, maybe about halfway, about halfway there. If I bring it more, then I'll start colliding with my geometry. So I'll bring it about halfway. Validate that. Now let's add some smoothing to this. See if we've solved our problem. Yep, we solved our problem. Let me click off. Now look at that. Nice and smooth. Now we do have some problems here. So let's go back to this. Select it. There we are. Now, right now, I can't select the control handles for this object. But notice down here, I have this little icon here. And yet, it's not displaying the, it's the control shape for this object. And the reason why it's not displaying is because I have already clicked off of the object and then clicked back on. So let me undo my smoothing. Let me redo my smoothing. And now you see these are highlighted in white. So I can click them. And I'll just hold down Shift. And I'll select those as well. And now I'll just pull this out a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, that looks good. Nice and smooth. It certainly uh, looks just as good as as uh, this trigger housing or a fuse housing. Okay, we will save that. Let's come back to our original, see what else we need to make for this. Uh, we need to make the pin 
or this this loop here and the cutter pin that goes in the middle of it so I spin around to a top view and I will enable the ground plane it just helps me visualize things a little bit better uh, come over here to lines uh, circle from center and I'll keep it at the default 20 points and come over here to point mode and I'm gonna delete half of those points I'm gonna take select that one and I'm gonna uh, drag it so away and so that it is in line with that one now what I will do is I will take these two right here and I will uh, remove the offset that is between them they're not perfect in fact let me show you a little better okay I want these to be straight across and right now it's showing me that there's an offset size of 18.241 so I'll just put zero in there and it straightens them out unfortunately it pulled this one out of uh, where I wanted it to be I wanted it to continue in this line so I'm gonna pull this up as close as I can now I'll select both of them hit zero and yes it probably moved this one just a little bit but it was so little you wouldn't even notice okay uh, now what I need to do is I need to mirror this so I'm gonna come over to 2d symmetry and I'll click well, abort that come over here to 2d symmetry and what I need to do is let me see if I do that there we are okay what I did was if I click now it'll it'll um, repeat the pattern left or right if I hit my space bar now it'll do it up and down and I guess I'll do it right there okay that looks good come over here to point, uh, edges I'll select that edge I don't want that edge and let me bring this back up here to the middle and let's scale this down am I in point mode? nope point mode let's drag these out a little bit more and let's come over here to surface modeling add some thickness to this there we are and vertex mode I will close off those those openings select faces and let's squeeze that down select that one squeeze that one down select both and let's bring them together okay there is our cutter pin believe that's what it's called it's the pin of the grenade I know that and we can probably select them again whoops select that one select that one and let's bring them down a little bit too now we need to make the little uh, loop that you grab so again let's drag out some uh, uh, a circle let's size it up now this needs to be right up in there this needs to be right up in there let's view my original <laughs> I 
Okay. Let's come back to our spoon here. Um, in order to keep the spoon secured with the cotter pin in place, if I recall, it's been a long time since I've played with one of these, if I recall correctly, the this part here, no, nope, I'm going to select points, select that point, and select that point. This edge of the spoon hangs down so that the cotter pin holds it in place. Once you pull the pin, now the spoon is free to come off. And once it comes off, it activates the fuse inside, five second fuse, and voila, you got a fireworks show. Okay, coming back to this, let's add a little thickness to that. There we go. I'm going to hide both of those. I'm going to save this so far. Now, let's just see something. I'm going to select the that point and that point. Let's see if we can just add a little bit of a bevel to it, if it'll allow us to. I don't know. But it just might make that area a little bit smoother. No, it's not. Okay, that's not a big deal because that is a... Let me come to the uh, wireframe view. That's pretty smooth anyway. We do need to pull these two out so that they are positioned correctly. There we are. Okay, there is our hand grenade. And it looks just like the original one. Let me unlock it, select it, move it over. Okay, I could squash this down, but uh, it certainly looks good enough for me. Dimensions or proportions might be off, but you know you can always adjust those however you like. And uh, I'd say we are finished with the modeling process of this. It didn't, certainly didn't take too long. Now I do want to call your attention to something. Before we finish up here, we can get rid of our. Oh, where is our curve? My curve disappeared. There it is. What was that one? Oh yeah, I don't need that. Okay, this thing is almost 15,000 polygons. Let me just, for the sake of fun, select all of the components on mine. Make sure everything's selected. Weld it all together. And I have 12,000. Now I do have smoothing that's applied to... Let me undo this because there should not be smoothing applied to that. Enable dynamic geometry. Okay. I'll go ahead and click my lightning bolt. Commit that level of smoothing. Okay. 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 Here is mine. Everything is all welded together. I've got 1,800, almost 2,000, as opposed to almost 15,000. If you look at them, uh, they don't look any different. In fact, I could add more smoothing to this, get it looking nicer, and I will still have fewer polygons. Well, I just add smoothing to the entire thing and not just the bottom because the whole thing is grouped together. But I could just on the bottom add another level of smoothing so it doesn't have that angular look and I would still have far fewer polygons than than this one. 
So, okay, that's it for this grenade tutorial. In the next one, we're going to start uh, UV mapping it, and then we'll drag those UVs into Photoshop. Now, here you see I welded it all together. Do not weld yours together. Do not weld it together because my um, understanding on using the UV tools with hexagon, it will make our life very difficult. It is easier to UV map all the pieces individually rather than have this big assortment of UVs uh, all clumped together in one model. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.